All right. Hello there, class. My name is Brian Murphy. I will be your English 1101 composition and rhetoric instructor for this summer semester. Today we are going to go over the syllabus, which is a sort of a boring process, but nevertheless, it has to be done. So this is the um, I'm just going using one of my online classes. I have two online 1101 this semester. Uh, so if you're not in six six, I'm sorry. If you're not in six four four six eight, then you would be in six four four six five. They are the same course, so this video will effectively serve for both. Just don't get the CRNs confused. Um, okay, so this is what your class essentially will look like. And if you're looking for the syllabus, you'll see over here uh, the syllabus tab. You're going to want to click on that, and it'll bring you up here to the English 1101 syllabus. You can click on that. All right. So uh, my office is in on the Carrollton campus. Uh, I used to be in Noonan, but now I'm on Carroll campus. So that's 207R is the number. Um, you can try to reach me by phone, but my preferred method of contact is email, and that's going to be brian.murphy at westcatech.edu. Uh, please do not use Blackboard messaging system, which I, I will mention again. It's just really hard to keep up with all of those inboxes and They've asked that we start to use email anyway. So uh, my office hours right now are Monday through Thursday from 1.30 to 3.30, but I'm very flexible. If you'd like to meet me some other time, all you have to do is shoot me an email and we can we can work something out. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, as I said, composition and rhetoric, 1101. Uh, I'm not gonna get into all of this legalese. You can read that. Uh, this is about the basic skills diagnostic assessment. Uh, which is due this Sunday. You're going to want to take that. If you get below a 70, you have to take the mastery assignments um, in the basic skills mastery folder. And yes, it, even if you get a 68, you have to take it. Uh, so please uh, don't ask me like, oh, I got a, I got a 69. Can I please? Uh, no, you have to take. Uh, so please make sure you do that by Sunday. There is no way to prepare for the basic skills stuff. It's a diagnostic assessment, which means that we're just trying to see what you know um, as you're coming in. So there is no way really to prepare or to study. Just take the test. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's life. All right, these are the instructor-specific syllabus policies. So uh, this is the really important part of my syllabus because this is all the stuff that I've written myself. Uh, these are things that uh, my personal policies, um, my take on the general policy, and also each one of these, you're going to say, wow, this is really long. Uh, every time I have an interaction that um, challenges the, the rules of the course, so to speak, I usually make another policy to cover it. So if it seems a little tedious, it's because I've been through a lot at this point. Um, but I'm going to necessarily summarize a lot of this. Of course, you can read it on your own if you want the specific language. Um, but the first thing, obviously, we got to get this out of the way. That's plagiarism and academic misconduct. Uh, I have a zero tolerance policy for plagiarism and academic misconduct. Uh, if you're caught representing any outside material as your own, uh, meaning without parenthetical citations or quotation marks, any works cited page, uh, if you are caught collaborating excessively with another person, using work produced by another person, providing fake or deliberately misleading citations or informations, or, and this one is key, using artificial intelligence on a discussion board or other writing assignment or recycling your own work from a previous class, you receive an automatic zero. So if it's, the reason I specified AI, using AI for like a small assignment is that for that you'll get a zero. But this next part, and I recently found out that I can do this, so I'm going to. Uh, if a student is found to have generated content for for an assignment using artificial intelligence, um, that's a major writing assignment, that student will receive an automatic F in the course, uh, even if it is cited. And I didn't used to have the policy be this draconian, although most, most students who get a zero on a major writing assignment, it is usually the case that they fail. If they don't fail, they get a D. D is not enough to go on to the next phase of um, English. It's not enough to get credit for this course, so to speak, in terms of your um, core classes. But if you use AI, that means chat GPT or similar programs to generate any content for a major writing assignment, you will get an F in the course. No questions asked. It will be automatic. 
Uh, so please don't do it. I have to be this punitive because I have now for several semesters, AI has been a thing for probably about two years, really majorly. Um, and we really started to see a lot of it last year. And now it gets to the point where I get up and I give my shtick on AI and I warn everybody and I say, please don't do it, please, please, please. And inevitably people still do. Um, last semester, I think I had five, five AI papers um, and each one of those people obviously had some problems. So um, I have made the penalty more severe in the hopes that uh, it will deter you from the temptation. Uh, it is very easy to tell if something is generated by AI. I know that you think that the machine can fool me, but really, um, I'll just say, I guess this would be the case anyway, but if it has fooled me, I haven't been aware of it, and I have been aware of its use on numerous different occasions. I've caught it several times. Uh, so please be aware that it's not in your best interest to use AI. In order to disguise an AI paper, you would have to do so much work that you should really just do the assignment. If you're going to be doing a lot of work to cheat on the assignment and to risk your academic livelihood, why not just do the assignment itself and skip that problem? Uh, but as I said, I'm very good at catching it. Uh, it. It really isn't as clever as you think it is. Maybe it will be in the future, I would imagine. Since all technology tends to progress, it will be. Um, but that's just something to be aware of. If you use AI, you're going to fail, so don't. All right. Uh, preferred communication. This next one is going to be just about how to contact me. Use my email if you could. You can use my phone and stuff if you want to try to get at me by another means. Um, I'm usually pretty good about answering emails, although it, specifically around essays and near the end of the semester and stuff, um, sometimes I get a very heavy amount of emails and stuff can get buried. So please do be patient, but I generally am very good at answering email. So that should take care of it if you communicate with me that way. Um, if you would, please include the course name and CRN. That's the course registration number. That's the random uh, strain of numbers that's after the course um, title in Blackboard. It's not 1101. It's the series of numbers. It's usually random. Um, and that tells me which specific class you're in. So I don't have to go and like, oh, they're in 1101. Let me see which roster they're on. Just tell me which uh, what the CRN is and um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible by email. Uh, you can also come by my office. I know that this is an online class, but uh, my office is here, so you can come by and say hello if you live in or around the Carrollton area. Uh, as I said, my office hours are listed on the syllabus, so don't be a stranger. Uh, email etiquette. So please do try to be uh, cordial, try to be um, professional, and also formal. So one of my jobs is to teach you how to write formally, how to communicate formally. Uh, so if you're just sending me a, an email that's like, hey, where is the, or my favorite one, hey, Brian, okay, here's the thing, like, it's not that I don't like you guys, I know that you're people out in the internet, out in the ether, but you don't know me that well, you don't know me well enough to call me Brian, that is generally a very informal practice, so please use my title, uh, you know, it's my job to teach you how to do these things, I'm not that big of a stick in the mud, but if you would please say, hey, professor or instructor or whatever title you prefer, uh, I'm not a doctor, so please, that's my brother, don't don't use Dr. Murphy, but um, if you would please just try to be formal, try to phrase it like a letter, hello, with a greeting, and with a sort of a, a goodbye or a, you know, a salutation at the end is generally a good uh, rule of thumb. Uh, so the Dropbox policy, that's going to be the next one. So for the Dropbox, um, we're going to be using the safe assign feature. I used to use turn it in, but they took it away from me. Um, Safe Assign is a plagiarism check device, so basically the way it works is that the essay has to go in the Dropbox if it's going to get graded, because if it doesn't go in the Dropbox, I don't have access to that plagiarism check. Uh, so a lot of times what will happen is students will say, oh, I'm having a hard time submitting my essay, I've been getting an error message, can I just email it to you? Uh, you can email it to me to show me that you had it done by the due date, but if it doesn't go in the box, it doesn't get graded, plain and simple. I've had people send me an emailed essay, uh, and then later come up and say, hey, why'd you put a zero in the gradebook? I sent it to you by email. Well, it's on the syllabus that's got to go in the box. And it's up to you to figure out how to resolve those problems. One thing you should be aware of is that your instructor has very, very little control over the technical end of your interface with Blackboard. Blackboard is a powerful program, but it's also kind of a, a fickle mistress, as they say. Uh, so, um, 
there's a lot of conversion issues. There's a lot of software problems. Certain computers don't work right. If you're using a Chromebook or a Mac, it's, chances are you're going to have problems. Uh, so all of that stuff has to be worked out by you. And now, so how do you work it out? Well, you submit a help desk ticket through the West Georgia Tech website. That's going to send your issue to our IT department and they can help you. I cannot handle 90% of that stuff. The only thing that I can handle is what you can see in terms of the content in Blackboard and what you have access to. So like I can open assignments for you. Um, I can change due dates and stuff and, and I can, uh, you know, give extra attempts and stuff if, if some event arised where that would be uh, reasonable. But in terms of like, hey, I can't get into my Blackboard account, I there's nothing I can do. So you need to manage that with IT and you need to do that uh, in a timely manner as well. Um, because they tend to get backed up sometimes, so you really want to try, as soon as you have an issue, go ahead and put in that help desk ticket, get it sorted out, and make sure your essays get into the proper box. The next one is the file conversion glitches. So sometimes if you, I would just say, go ahead, use the link in the syllabus to get access to your Microsoft out Office account. That's going to give you access not only to Microsoft Word, but also PowerPoints and Excel and any other thing you might need for uh, school, right? Go ahead, get it, write your essays in Word, save them as Word files, and submit them as Word files. Because if you write it in Google Docs and then you save it as a Word file, I don't know if there are these little goblins that live in the internet and they just mess things up because they loved mischief. I have no idea, but stuff gets moved around sometimes and it's impossible for me to tell what happened because of a conversion glitch and what happened because a student doesn't know how to properly format in MLA. So please be aware that that happens. Generally speaking, if you use Microsoft Word, if you submit in Microsoft Word, that eliminates a lot of those issues. Not entirely, and sometimes the safe assign Dropbox can show things incorrectly and stuff. Don't panic about that because usually the file that's attached is fine. I don't understand technology any better than you do, but please be advised that if you get your Microsoft Word up and running, which the link again is available in the syllabus, you can log into it with your school login. Uh, that's going to take care of a lot of those problems. Uh, the next one is going to be the Grammarly policy. So the Grammarly is an interesting uh, problem because, you know, we've had spell check for a while and it's not like wildly different than spell check. Uh, it is a little bit more sophisticated. It does use artificial intelligence. So students ask, can I use Grammarly? So the answer is a very complicated yes. Um, you can use it to help with certain minor edits and things like that. If you have like the premium feature and stuff like that, you're pushing it because what happens is if you allow Grammarly to impress too much upon your writing, a lot of times it will get flagged for AI. Uh, I have seen that happen. My wife has seen that happen. Um, so what you should be aware of is if you use Grammarly, you need to use it very sparingly because I am not going to make a distinction between whether or not you got flagged for AI because of Grammarly and whether or not you got flagged for AI because of ChatGPT or something similar. Reason being is because how am I supposed to tell? Uh, and if I allow for Grammarly as an AI loophole, then everyone's going to say, oh, I use Grammarly when really they went to ChatGPT and just had the whole thing generated. So um, if you use it, please be very careful with it. Uh, you know, I'm not one of these people that thinks that you shouldn't use the tools that you have available to you. Um, but you should be very careful about how you use them and you don't want to become over reliant on these things uh, such to the point that you get a AI positive. Um, so the feedback, so students ask like, hey, can, can I send my essay to you and you give me a little bit of feedback or whatever? So in terms of feedback, what I'm able to do is I can make general comments about things that I see like, hey, you got a lot of comma splices going on or, hey, I noticed that your title is sort of lackluster. It's kind of putting me to sleep. Why don't you jazz it up a little bit? Things like that I can do, give you general feedback. I can't go through with a felt tip pen and mark every problem that you have because that borders on excessive collaboration, which does actually count. You can excessively collaborate with a faculty member, although it's not very common. Um, but if I were to correct every comma, every problem you have and hand it back to you, well, then that's a bunch of points that you're going to get on the essay that you didn't do any work to get, right? So I can give you general feedback and then you have to go and find, based on that general feedback, the issues in the paper to fix. Also, if you're going to do that, I need some time. I can't have a bunch of people three days, two days before the essays due, hitting on my inbox, hey, can you read over this? 
Uh, it's just not feasible. I mean, sometimes I can manage stuff like that, but generally speaking, if, if you're the kind of student that really values feedback, especially since this is an online course, uh, go ahead and get it at me in advance uh, and give me some time and then I will get those things turned around to you. Um, okay, student accountability policy. So this is basically, I mean, in an online class, every week I will be sending you a message at the start of the week, like I did this week, uh, explaining what's going on, what's due, right? What to expect, if there are any things you should be aware of. So be, be advised on Monday, generally you should log in, check your email, check your announcements, see if I've sent out the announcements, if anything has changed. Uh, also, I will tell you what's due and what to read and all that stuff. So it's a good way to keep up with it. However, let's say that something happens and I'm unable to post an announcement. I have a two-year-old child. So let's say that I have to stop what I'm doing and go and deal with Aiden. Um, if that is the case and I don't send out the reminder, it doesn't mean that you are excused from doing your assignments. The syllabus is there. It has been there since day one. The due dates are in the computer. They are on the syllabus. If you do not keep up with that stuff, you, you cannot come later in the semester and say, oh, well, he forgot to send an email on Monday, the whatever. Well, okay, but this is college, right? You're an adult. You can handle your, uh, your stuff and you are expected to. So I will send you that email every week. Scout's honor, I'll do it, uh, and barring some sort of crazy uh, mishap. And uh, you can count on that to be there. However, in the rare event that it's not, it doesn't mean you're excused. You still need to keep up with what's on the syllabus. It's your responsibility to do so. Check it every week, check it every Monday, right? Really, you should check it on Sunday because most of the assignments with a few exceptions are due on Sunday. So if you check it on Sunday morning, that way nothing creeps up on you. You may end up working all afternoon, but you're not gonna freak out and get a zero or something else like that. So you are accountable for your own schoolwork. That's basically what that says. Dual enrollment. So some of you may be dual enrollment students. I don't know. Some are generally not. But if you are, please be advised, you will not be treated any differently for being uh, in high school. Um, you might as well be in college because you are. You're enrolled in a college class, so you'll be treated just like any other student. Uh, the reason I have to put this is because a lot of times um, dual enrollment students will say, well, I'm in high school. I can't do this or I don't You know, you make excuses. Um, that is not, we're not going to make any adjustments. If you think that a level of rigor that you could expect from a college course is too much, especially during a summer semester, which is really fast paced, then you might want to factor that into your decision to remain in this class. Uh, however, you will not be treated any differently. The only exception to that rule is for certain extracurriculars, if the student is in good academic standing, I will sometimes make adjustments, right? I'm not going to make you miss your track meet or whatever, uh, just because, or, you know, I'm not going to like penalize you over something like that as long as you are in good standing and you do what you're supposed to do, but you have to communicate with me, okay? And otherwise, you will not be treated any differently. The next one goes for competitive selection notice. Um, so competitive selection, uh, we have some programs at West Georgia Tech that are competitive selection. Mostly those are related to the healthcare field. I think there may be one or two that aren't. Uh, but generally speaking, those are gonna be uh, programs that require you to have a high GPA, not only a high GPA, a GPA that is higher than other people, right? So it doesn't. it's not uncommon that I will have a student who takes my class, gets a B, can't deal with the B, and takes it again until they get an A. And it's wild, right? And usually what happens is the second time around, since the student passed the course with a B and is taking it again, I don't know what it is about that scenario, but there's generally like a sort of sense of entitlement that some students have. with like, well, I have to get an A and this time around. I'm doing it again, so I have to get an A. Well, if you have to get an A, then may I suggest that you get one, right? Because I'm not going to give you one simply because you're taking the class a second time. Uh, also, if you're only taking it the first time and you're still competitive selection, that I'll, I have to get an A, I have to get an A, that's on you, right? I don't give A's away. I don't know anybody that gives A's away. A's are earned, right? So if you want an A, then you will earn an A. And the fact that you are in competitive selection, because again, think about it. If I were to give you an A, then your GPA would have you beat out someone else who potentially earned it, right? That's not good. So 
uh, please be aware of that as well. Recycling work from other classes or previous attempts at this class. Do not recycle any work. Don't recycle it. Treat every assignment as a new hurdle, right? Because if you recycle your assignment from high school, or maybe you've taken my class or someone else's 1101 before, uh, that's technically cheating, right? Because you tried to take the course, you didn't pass it, you have to take it again, you have to meet each expectation as a new expectation. If you go and you try to um, recycle things and make it easier on yourself, you're basically trying to make, um, you're, you're playing the system in a certain way there. Uh, so please don't recycle any other work. Just resist the temptation. Computer use during lectures doesn't really apply to an online course. I will say don't use your computer to Google answers during the test. I will say that, of course I can say that. It doesn't mean that you're gonna listen, but um, please don't do that. Uh, issues with Chromebooks, I already mentioned this, but if you rely on a Chromebook, if you rely on a, a Mac, uh, it's not universally true. So sometimes people use a Chromebook and it's just fine. Sometimes they use a Chromebook that's a few years old and they have tons of problems. Um, sometimes weird things happen with the Mac and everything, even though I know it's a fancy schmancy computer. Um, if you rely on one of those computers, or if you find that the computer that you rely on is giving you problems, it is up to you to figure out an alternative. Maybe you can borrow you know, Aunt Charlene's laptop for a few hours or whatever. Um, but it's up to you to figure that out. We do have media centers on every campus that are stocked with some number of computers. Uh, and so you do have computer access, even if you do not own one or if yours doesn't work out. Although since this is an online class, you really probably want to have a device that you can rely on. If not from yourself, then from someone you know or a friend or whatever. Uh, so please be aware of that content advisory. So, um, I do one, one of the things that makes my class a little different than some other people that do 1101 is I tend to assign a, a little bit more reading, not a lot, just a, a couple of short readings, just to kind of give us something to actually talk about. Right. Uh, that's not so technical and dry. Um, so sometimes, um, sometimes students, it's impossible to make everybody happy. Right. Um, it's impossible to cater to everyone's, you know, sense of morals or right and wrong or what is appropriate or inappropriate or whatever. I try to be pretty, you know, standard in terms of what I assign. Uh, but every once in a while, you get a student that's very disturbed by X and Y, right? For whatever reason. Um, so if you are reading something that I assign over the semester and you find that the content it doesn't jive with your sense of uh, what what you would like to be exposed to. Please be aware that I'm perfectly happy to have that conversation with you. If you want to uh, rail on the discussion board about how terrible the 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 reading was, um, that's fine, right? I'm not one of those people that gets my feelings hurt if you don't like the things that I assign. The only thing I will say is that I'm not going to dismiss anything on the basis of moral objection or any other kind of objection. So I don't like this. Can I read something else? No. Short answer, right? Um, you're perfectly fine to express your discontent as long as you do so in a respectful way to me, to your students, to I mean, your fellow students, your peers, whatever. But if I assign it, we're going to read it. If you think you may have a problem with that, that's something that you want to factor into your decision to remain in this course. Uh, disruptive behavior. Again, this is an online class. We're not going to have any issues with disruptive behavior. Just be nice in the emails and be mindful of the fact that uh, your professors do tend to juggle quite a few things. Um, and so being respectful and, and courteous is the way to get the same energy given to you in your circumstance. Uh, plans for an online shift? Well, we are online. So I put that's left over from COVID when I, did, I wasn't sure if my seated classes were going to remain seated or not. Uh, of course, materials and Blackboard. So I think I've done a really good job of cleaning Blackboard up this time, but you never know. There's always something. Um, so basically, if you're wondering what's due, go by the syllabus, even over the, the due dates in Blackboard. I have them set up, but if you're unsure, you want to double check, go in, check the syllabus, because the, the syllabus is a binding contract between you and your instructor. So if something is on the syllabus, that means that uh, it's that's what we're doing, right? 
Um, so go by that. If you see something on Blackboard, hey, I didn't see this do. It's probably not because I do remove some of the assignments that are in there and I change it with others. And I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure I got it cleaned up. But in the event that I don't, go by the syllabus. Always go by the syllabus. Uh, attendance policy, you are expected to attend regularly. You should check, since this is an online class, you should check it at least once or twice a week. I mean, I'm probably even more than that. Uh, and you know, if you are going to be out for any long reason, or if you're going to be unable to do your work for any reason, you need to communicate with me. You've got to communicate. I can't have this coming at the end of the semester. Oh, I had a funeral in the third week of I, that's, we're not going to do that stuff retroactively. If you communicate with me throughout the process, that's a little different, uh, but I, I need, I need you to be upfront with it. Um, late work. So here's the policy on late work. So the only thing that I accept late without penalty, well, I'm sorry, not without penalty. There is a penalty, but the only thing that I accept late without an excuse, a credible excuse, is a major writing assignment. So there's going to be, you can call them essays, writing assignments, whatever. There are three of them. If you are late with those, there's, a, I think it's five points a day that I have on my syllabus. Most people do more. Uh, I'm a big softie, so I do five. Um, not really, but I have to say that. Uh, so five points a day, if, if you, uh, a couple days late, you know, you'll get a letter grade or so, but you can still hand it in and that'll be okay. Uh, if it's not a major writing assignment, if it's an outline, if it's a quiz, if it's a discussion and you miss it and you don't have a credible excuse, you can't make it up, period. Okay. Uh, and so what counts as a credible excuse? Okay. Emergencies. That's the short answer. What counts as an emergency? You are sick. Your kid is sick. You have a funeral to attend. Uh, your even things like your mother's graduation. Okay, we can work with that as well. Um, if it's something, if it's a major life event or an emergency that you must take off or you must have an excuse for, uh, then that is okay. Things that don't qualify as excuse absences. Number one is going to be work. Okay, everybody works. I work. You work. Right. Your peers work. There's no thing about your situation, you know, waiting tables at O'Charlie's that is any different than anyone else's in the class, right? So if you have your boss tell you that you need to be there for a shift that conflicts with your class or conflicts with the due dates of your schoolwork, that is something that you need to work out with your boss. Because on my end of it, if it's not a credible excuse, if it's not an emergency or a major life event, it's not excusable. So if you get scheduled for a shift and you want to take the shift because the money is more important than, than the assignment, then that is your decision to make as a free thinking adult. Uh, but if if you do not have uh, a credible excuse, then you don't get to make it up. So work doesn't count. Also, car trouble. I have students who wake up. Oh, my car wouldn't start. OK, how do I know that? Right. How do I, And you say, well, you should just believe me. I would, and I want to, but I've had so many instances where uh, that hasn't been the case, right? Someone says they had this and that happening, and really they just forgot or whatever. They slept late. Um, so if you want to send me a picture of your Volvo burning on the side of the freeway, then maybe that would count as car trouble that we might excuse. Uh, but just it won't start or whatever. Get a ride. Get a ride. You know, this is an online class. If you got to go to a proctor assignment, get a ride uh, or, you know, just deal with your stuff later. Um, there are things that have life happens sometimes uh, and you really want to try to work around those things the best you can um, and reserve the um, absences for emergencies. I may ask you to uh, produce a verification of some kind. I usually do. Um, this is particularly tricky for illnesses because sometimes people are like, well, I would have gone to urgent care, but I don't want to pay the bill or whatever. Um, so, you know, there we, we, you can, I do it on a case by case basis in terms of what method of proof I will accept. Uh, but 90% of the time that's going to be a doctor's note or some other kind of, uh, proof of verif verified emergency. Don't get your feelings hurt if I ask for an obituary. Okay. It's not to say that you're lying. I know that's a sensitive thing, but it is something that I have to do to make sure that, that we have uh, integrity in the late policy, right? Because if you can just fabricate whatever excuse, 
uh, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So having that proof or some sort of verification, uh, and like I said, we can work out on an individual basis what will suffice, but you do need to have something. Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, essay outlines do not count as writing assignments, and so they're not accepted late. They're just like any other assignment. Uh, okay, pop quizzes, I reserve the right to give them. Uh, I'm not, you know, we're not in a seated class. So that's probably not going to happen. But if I want to add a quiz or something, uh, I can. And if I put it on the syllabus and give you uh, ample notice, then it's going to stick. Late to class doesn't count because you're online. Technical difficulties, this just says it's your responsibility to keep up with your... Um, your end of the technical issues, computer stuff, right? Uh, that's all on you and communicating with IT. Uh, Blackboard timeout error. The most common login error occurs when Blackboard times out of the Okta dashboard and therefore, therefore produces an error message. Uh, so if you're like, if you logged in and then you walk away and you leave the Okta dashboard up and you come back and you try to get in Blackboard and you keep getting this error message and you try to log out and you keep getting the error message. Uh, it's because you got to log out of the Okta dashboard, which is that little thing where you see the four icons, you know, banner, blackboard, whatever. Um, that is, you have to log out of that, log back in, and then you can get into Blackboard. 90% of the login errors are resolved by fixing that problem. The other 10% are resolved by fixing your password. If it's something other than that, that's on IT, and I have no idea what to tell you. Uh, here's the AI writing software warning. Notice how long it is. Um, you know, there's a big debate in academia right now about uh, what counts as acceptable AI usage. I just prefer, the only thing that I will allow you to use, basically the things that I allow AI for, I would have no way to detect anyway. So like if you want to use it, let's say you got a research paper and you want to ask it for some search terms about how to find credible sources on algae blooms. Um, that's fine. And then how would I ever know, right? As long as you didn't use the language from the AI, you can use it to help you, give you ideas, those kinds of things. What you cannot do is use it to generate text, which you then use in the essay, and even if you change it around. Don't use the AI to generate uh, text for the essays. Now, the thing is, is that the number of students who are using AI as a study tool in the acceptable sense of the term is very, very small compared to the number of students who just go, oh, no, I forgot about this essay. I guess I'll go to ChatGPT and generate one. Um, so, you know, most of the time that's not even a problem. Uh, if you use AI on an assignment, you'll get an F in the course. It says any assignment. I, I may make some leeway to that with the discussions and stuff. But if, if a writing assignment has AI on it, for sure, it's F. No question. If I can prove it, and there are methods that I have to prove it, I use a series of methods. One of the first things we're going to do is get a writing diagnostic from you. That's going to give me a sample of your writing at the start of the class. Uh, and I use that sample to compare later to see if I see like an astronomical leap in uh, like vocabulary, let's say. Um, like I had a student one time, the way that I caught them for AI was I, I noticed that they had written a paper that used the word levity four times. Now you may know what the word levity means. I would wager probably not. I've used the word levity maybe three times in my life other than this video I'm making. So when I saw that, I was like, hmm, levity, huh? Uh, and so that was a, a cue for me to go and run it through the detection services. Uh, so I run it through, there are AI detectors. I run it through those. I uh, compare it to the writing sample, and then I do a follow-up corroboration. Between the three of those things, uh, I should be able to build a sound case um, that you have used AI. And if that uh, is done, then you just get the F and that's that. Uh, if you, if we are ever in a situation where I am enforcing a plagiarism or academic dishonesty or misconduct penalty, be that for AI or for some other thing, uh, if you deny doing it, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, one of us is making a mistake. Either I'm wrong, which is intolerable. I can't be wrong. I can't be accusing people of cheating that haven't cheated, right? That's not fair. Either I'm wrong or you're doubling down on the misconduct. Neither of those situations is acceptable. So if we're in a situation, you say, look, I didn't do this. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. We're going to involve a third party. I'll send uh, the case over to the Dean of Student Affairs, 
and then she'll tell me whether or not uh, she supports my decision. Most of the time, pretty much all of the time, uh, they do support the decision because I do not level these accusations at students without having the, the receipts. Uh, I have never been wrong, knock on wood, never been wrong thus far. So uh, in the event that I accuse you, it means that I know that you've done it and uh, never been proven wrong. So uh, it would be in your best interest in that way to admit it, because if it turns out that the Dean of Student Affairs agrees with me, well, then that's something to me that says student got accused and instead of admitting it, instead of recognizing their mistake, they doubled down. That's the kind of thing we start looking into code of conduct violations, because clearly you don't, it's not clicking the importance of maintaining the integrity of our institution. So in those kinds of events, we might look into code of conduct violation, which means that it's going to stick, uh, it's going to follow you around. Not, not the best, right? Not the best thing. Uh, so the writing sample clause. So I do take a diagnostic from you at the start of the semester, right? That's due uh, next Wednesday. But also, um, I reserve the right to, because you, it's conceivable that you would improve on your writing, right? You do, you do the diagnostic and then I teach you about writing, you're gonna get a little better, right? So it could be that I'm not sure whether or not the level of improvement indicates that nefarious methods were used or not. Um, so I may ask you for a writing sample, right? Hey, write me a paragraph with your, you know, and. Send, I mean, in class, it would be by hand, but since you guys are online, it'd probably be just say, hey, send me a little like paragraph. Um, and I reserve the right to do this. You, by signing the course agreement form, you agreed to the syllabus, so you agreed to provide it if you are asked. It is not for a grade, and I can ask for any reason. If I ask you for the writing sample, please do not take it as, oh, he's accusing me. I'm asking you for the sample, right, which means that I don't know whether or not you did it. I suspect you may have, which is why I've asked you. But in the event that you send me a writing sample and it's very similar and it doesn't get flagged for AI and okay, you just, you learned a couple extra words, whatever. But if I ask you for the sample, you got to give it to me. Please do not complain about it. It's not for a grade. You just got to do it. Okay. So that's there in the syllabus, just so you know. Respondents browser. So we are going to use the respondents browser. It takes the IT people a little while to uh, get that ready. So um, it's not ready now. The assignment that it is for is the logical fallacies test, which I have added recently because I feel like logical fallacies are very important. Um, so please don't take that in advance. You can work ahead on any other assignment, generally speaking. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because you need the instruction. Uh, but if you want to watch all, you want to binge all my lecture videos and take the whole class in two days, there's nothing I can do to tell you you can't. The only exception to that is going to be the logical fallacies test. Don't take that until the respondents browser is set up, and I will tell you when it will be before the due date. Okay. Um, the respondents browser is a online proctoring uh, thing. It watches your movements and makes sure that you aren't clicking on stuff and cheating. Uh, and so you have to have a webcam. If you don't have a webcam, you got to find one, or you got to come into campus and take a actual proctored version of the exam. Um, so. That's just something that I want to bring up, let you know. And the final thing is going to be the grade rounding policy. So the grade rounding policy, I, I don't, if you get within a point, I'll give it to you. Like if you're, if you're an 89 point, whatever, okay, hey, close enough. All right. And that's pretty generous of me, but you know, whatever, right? I'm, I'm not trying to, to ruin anybody's Christmas. Uh, however, if it's more than a point, no way, man. I'm not rounding your grade. The reason this is in here is because I had a student one time ask me to do to round their grade uh, to the next letter grade, which was 3.4 points away, which is crazy. I mean, that's just like that. Wow. You know, um, and I couldn't believe that they didn't understand why I wasn't letting them do it or why I wasn't agreeing to it. Uh, so, you know, you get the grade you get. If you get close enough, I'll give it to you. If not, no dice. That's the way it goes. It's in the syllabus. All right. So I don't want to come off as being overtly standoffish or whatever with this, but you, you must understand that each one of these um, syllabus policies represents a uh, incident in the past that has caused me issues. That's why they're all in there. So everything should be clear. Uh, this, these policies are subject to change. However, if they do change, I will tell you. All right, uh, these are just the general language on like participation and testing and proctoring and stuff that the school has. 
Um, my, and the late work here, the late work uh, is, this is the general school policy. My late work policy is the one under the instructor specific policies. So please make sure that you go by that one. All right, uh, the course weights. So this is how the course is weighted. Writing assignments is gonna be 60%. There are three of them. Um, they're generally around three pages, sometimes a little longer. So that's 20% 20, 20 each. Now, if you plagiarize a major writing assignment and you get a zero, let's say you don't use AI, but you plagiarize the good old fashioned way of cheating. Uh, if you do, you get a zero, that's you're starting at an 80. Most people that get a zero on a writing assignment, either they don't hand one in or they plagiarize or whatever, they don't pass the class, generally speaking. They certainly don't pass it with a C, which you need to move on. D is technically passing in terms of your GPA, but it's not in terms of getting the course credit. Uh, the next one is going to be learning activities. So that's going to be reading quizzes. I do reading quizzes, uh, discussion boards, and then a couple of other small quizzes that are thrown in there. Uh, those are 15%. The next one is test and pre-writing. Those are going to be all of the major uh, rhetorical strategies tests that I've assigned, as well as the essay outlines, which are due prior to the essay, usually a couple days before. That's going to be 20%. Uh, and then comes the basic skills. The basic skills confuses a lot of people. So here's here's the rundown. It's 5% of the grade. That's it. Okay. But whatever you get on the diagnostic, let's say you get 75 out of 100. That is factored into the 5%. So you get 75% of 5%, if that makes sense. Uh, if you want to do the mastery assignments, you can. There are a bunch of them. There's, it's like a lot. But if you want to do those, uh, you can, and you can actually get to the full 5% by doing those assignments, even if you get above a 70. You just have to do enough assignments to where the basic skills um, mastery score is higher than the diagnostic score, in which, place I in which case I replace them, right? So that can be a little confusing for students. Can I get extra credit on the basic skills? Yes, you can, but you pretty much have to do all of them. Uh, there's no like, oh, I did a couple of basic skills. Can you add a couple of points? No, that's not how it works. The score has to be higher, okay? Uh, so that's another one. That's going to be 5%. Again, that diagnostic is due this Sunday. Please do it. And it's really long. It's like 100 minutes, and it's a long exam. Take it in a place where you have good internet and don't close it. Don't close it. If you, if you know the internet is spotty at Meemaw's house, go somewhere else. Uh, that has a good Wi-Fi that you because uh, I have tons of problems with students. I got kicked out of the test. I did this and that. I it's too much. Just make sure you're in a good place when you take it. Okay. Now I understand problems do happen, and I'm willing to help you resolve those where I can. However, uh, we can we can nip a lot of this in the bud if you will just take these precautions. Be somewhere where you can take the quiz. All right, so that takes care of the, the grading breakdown. This is the how to get an A, B, C, D. You guys know this. This is generally the thing. Withdrawals and stuff. You can withdraw later. The withdrawal day is very late. Uh, here's the ethical use of artificial intelligence. Uh, again, you can use it to help you study. You cannot use it to generate anything. That's my rule. If you use it to generate anything, you're done. That's it. Uh, okay, cool. Code of conduct, you can refer to the college catalog. Here's the course schedule. This is subject to change. Uh, drop ad is over tomorrow. So if you decide that you can't stand my class, uh, you're free to drop it, um, but you have to do so by tomorrow. Otherwise, you have to get a withdrawal and it's not more complicated. Uh, okay, so this week, you got to watch the intro to course and syllabus. That is this video. Uh, the intro to rhetorical strategies, that is in my lecture videos folder, as well as the, the video on plagiarism and acad academic misconduct. Now, one thing I will say is that I have not updated the video for that yet, but the slides have been updated to include some information about AI. So you may want to check out those slides in addition, uh, just to make sure you get that little extra information. It's really nothing that I haven't already told you here, but it may be useful to just check it out. Uh, so you're going to want to check those out. Also going to watch the lecture video on MLA formatting and uh, the intro to essay one and rubric. These are all my personal lecture videos that are in a folder. If you go in the lessons tab, lessons folder, there's going to be Professor Murphy's YouTube lectures folder. You click on that. These are the lectures I'm referring to. There's other video content to help you supplement, but I'm really referring to the stuff that I made is what you should prioritize for this stuff. So 
Uh, once you've watched those videos, you got some homework. Big one is going to be the diagnostic test. It's due by Sunday. It's pretty long. You also want to take uh, the plagiarism and academic misconduct quiz and the syllabus quiz uh, that are both available to you in the quizzes folder. And then you're going to want to do the first discussion, which is the student introduction. All of this is due by midnight. One of the problems with summer semester, folks, it's eight weeks to do 16 weeks of material. Normal semester, spring and fall, 16 weeks, 15, 16, give or take. Summer semester is half that time. So it's all of the work of a normal semester in half the time. So if you feel like, man, he's really loading us with work, this is all I can do, right? Because what we can't do is we can't trim the class down to a, ske a skeletal level uh, just because you're taking summer, because then everyone would take summer and they wouldn't bother with fall and spring, right? Uh, okay, so let's see. Next week, I want you to read Plato's The Allegory of the Cave, uh, and then the following chapters of the successful college composition. It's going to be 3 3, 3 4, 3 6, and 3 7. Uh, next week, no shows are due. If you don't log in and do the course agreement form, you're going to get kicked out of the class and you have to reinstate yourself. That's the long and short of that. Next week, I want you to watch the lecture video on the classification strategy, the process strategy, the compare and contrast strategy, and the cause and effect strategy. And I also want you to watch the video uh, talking about the allegory of the cave, which is one of my favorite texts to assign students who are just setting out on their journey to learn. Um, I don't really look at it through a philosophical lens, uh, like all of the really technical philosophy stuff, the Plato and his forms and all that stuff. I look at it from the terms of like, this is what it takes to become educated. You have to learn how to get over personal biases and things like that. And that's really what that allegory is about. An allegory is a story with a double meaning, right? So on the one hand, it's a story about dudes in a cave. On the other hand, it has nothing to do with dudes in a cave. So try to figure out what the allegorical meaning is. Generally, when I quiz you on this stuff, I don't ask you heavily interpretive questions. I just ask you what happened. So even if you read it and you're like, I don't know what this means, you don't have to know what it means. You just have to know what went on. If you know what went on, you'll do fine on the quiz. Um, so do for homework. The writing diagnostic is due next Wednesday. I gave you a couple extra days on that one just to make it a little less stressful for you. Uh, then the quiz over the allegory cave is Sunday. Then we have the 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 6, and 3, 7 tests. Those are very long. I think I have it set to where you get a couple attempts on, uh, of attempts on those. Uh, and then the discussion two is also due. So there's a lot of work for next week too. If you want to go ahead and get started on that stuff, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, and then I want you to read Shirley Jackson's The Lottery and Chapter 5 of The Grammar. It's a standalone PDF that you can find. Uh, and then I want you to watch the videos on the lottery, on explaining the outline assignment, the final tips for essay one. I actually have to make this video, but I will. I'll make it this week. Uh, and then watch the grammar instructional videos, which are in the folder. Those are optional, but I do recommend that you do it. Uh, then on Wednesday, the 12th, the outline is due. Sunday the 16th, uh, all four of the grammar quizzes for Chapter 5 are due. The reading quiz over the lottery is due, and also Essay 1 is due that Sunday. So again, crunch time, right out, of the, right out of the gate, right? After that, I want you to read Jonathan Swift's Amanda's Proposal in the Supplementary Readings folder, Successful College Composition Chapter 3, 8. We are going to be closed on June 19th, not that it matters, you guys are online, but we're closed for June 19th for the holiday, Juneteenth. Uh, I want you to watch the lecture video on Amana's proposal, my lecture video. I want you to watch the intro video on uh, persuasion, argumentation, and exemplification. I want you to watch the lecture video on the crap credibility test and the intro to Galileo. That's going to be for week four, those videos. I also want you to do the reading quiz for Amana's proposal, the discussion over the crap test, and the 3-8 quiz, or test, rather. Uh, and then for that next week, I want you to read Letter from Birmingham Jail. I want you to do 3.9 Exemplification and 3.10, which is a supplemental PDF. You're going to watch the videos on uh, Letter from Birmingham Jail. And also, on logical, you're going to watch the video on Logical Fallacies, which, again, I have to create. I will create it this week. Um, also, we're going to start. So my third unit, I have us read uh, a novel, which is unorthodox of me. But uh, we're going to read 1984 by George Orwell. So please watch the first lecture video on that and also get ready to start uh, reading it because it is kind of long. I have a PDF available for free. I have an audio book available to you. If you're one of those people, you got to have a physical copy of the book in your hand. You can buy it on eBay, but I'm not allowed to require you to do that. So I've given you the text and means of the free free means. If you want to go and buy a five dollar copy of 1984 on eBay, more power to you, but I can't make you do it.
So we got a reading quiz that uh, Sunday, and then we got the logical fallacies test. That's going to be the respondus assignment that I'm doing. So don't take that one in advance. Uh, and then do 3.9 and 3.10 test for that, and then as well as the uh, discussion on reflecting on argumentation. And then for the following week, we're going to do 1984 Book 1. So watch the lecture for that. Watch the lecture for the intro to Essay 3. And then for homework on week six, we have uh, outline two is due, is due on the third. Essay uh, two is due on Sunday the seventh, as well as 1984 quiz one and discussion six. All right, week seven, the last day to withdraw the semester. It's crazy late how they do it now. They used to not do it this late. Uh, it's July 8th. So if you get to July 7th and you have a 23 in the class, you might want to withdraw. The only reason I would say I can't, I'm not allowed to tell you you should or shouldn't. You might want to factor it in because it's better to get a W than an F because it doesn't count against your GPA. It does show up on your transcript. So people could say, wow, they got like 12 W's. What's this about? That doesn't necessarily look good, but it doesn't count against your GPA the same way. So if you get to the 7th of July and you've got a 23 in the class, so probably safe to say you're going to fail. You might want to withdraw before the deadline to save yourself some grief. However, if you get financial aid, most people who get financial aid do not withdraw because if you get dropped below full time, it screws up the aid that you get. That's not good. Um, okay. So for week eight, we're doing the lecture video on book two. Uh, and then I'm going to make another video on 1984 in today's world. Uh, then you're going to do the quiz two on Sunday for the novel and then discussion seven. Then the following week, we'll do book three. Uh, and you're going to do the reading quiz and then outline three on Sunday, the 21st, as well as discussion eight, which is an open evaluation. And then week nine, the essay, third essay, which is the final assignment in the class. Let's do Wednesday, July 4th at 11.59. Um, Blackboard will close at midnight on Wednesday. So if you wait past Wednesday, yikes, that's not good. Uh, I got to have it in that Dropbox, you know, so you need to do it before Wednesday. If you think you can't meet that deadline or you anticipate having trouble, then you need to go ahead and get it done early. Um, because grades are due very shortly after that, I cannot give you any more time. That is literally all the time I can give you. Um, generally speaking, you will get comments on essay two and essay one. Uh, I will put feedback on the essays and you will get them. Essay three, you don't really get feedback on them because it's not really the time for me to put extensive feedback. And also you're gonna get kicked out of Blackboard so you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. If after the semester you wanna contact me and ask why you got what you got and what happened, you can and I'll be happy to answer you. Uh, you can also come by my office after the semester and we can go over the essay together if you like. Uh, but that is due on the 24th and not a minute after. Okay, so please have that in there. Uh, on the 29th, grades are due. Uh, and then you'll know your grade in Banner a couple of days after. Banner is not Blackboard. Uh, those are different things. Banner is what you use to register for classes. Blackboard is what you use to actually take the class. So that is the schedule that we have set up. These dates are set in stone. Uh, they may change, but probably not. So if they do change, I'll let you know well in advance and you'll be able to make that decision. I will also update the syllabus. The syllabus is the binding contract. Whatever is said on the syllabus, that's what you got to go by. One thing I didn't point out is over here on the right, we have if you have to take the basic skills assignments, they are listed here and the week, the pacing that you should. I don't really make them like I will let you work on the basic skills right up until week eight. Like you can start it on week eight and finish it and I'll accept it. Uh, but generally speaking, after week eight, no more basic skills stuff. So if you want to get those, squeeze those extra points out. It's a lot of students do in that last week, although I do think sometimes that tends to distract from what's really important, which is the writing assignment. But if you think you can handle both and you want to get a little extra squeeze, then you can do that stuff right up until week eight. But then after that, it's closed. So that's what I have planned for you. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick before I end the video is just kind of show you how I got everything set up. So uh, we'll just do one of these online classes here. Okay. If you go in the lessons tab, lessons folder, you'll see here's everything that I have in here. Uh, this is the respondus stuff for when you have to take the proctor exam. This is the textbook, uh, the PDF, the full PDF. I also have isolated uh, chapters that are included in lessons and they're included in the quizzes folders and stuff. Um, but that's the full PDF. 
Then we have the basic skills assessment, which you need to take soon. Uh, and then these are the mastery folders. So if you get below a 70 or if you want to you want to squeeze the extra points, you can take all the assignments in these folders uh, up until the eighth to the eighth week. I mean, to uh, to pad your 5%. Okay. Um, this is the writing resources folder. This contains just stuff to help you with writing stuff on Galileo, stuff on MLA, stuff on plagiarism and how to understand writing assignments and videos and stuff. So this is a good little resource that you have available to you. Um, after that, we have the writing assignments folder. You click on this and you see uh, these are the writing assignments. Uh, we have the diagnostic, SA1, SA2, and SA3. It was writing assignment one, excuse me. Uh, and then this is the rubric, which just kind of explains how you're graded. Not really anything terribly important there, but a lot of students do ask. It's not just random. I don't just make up grades. There's a very clear way in which we devise what you get, and uh, that rubric explains it. Uh, if it's a test or a quiz, it's in this folder. Okay, I try to make everything really super easy. When you get in here, it's like 10 million folders. I'm just like, no, we only we don't need that. We need five or six. Uh, so this is going to be all your quizzes with the study materials and everything. Here they are, all set up for you. Uh, just don't take. Actually, I'm going to make this one unavailable in this course. Not that. Don't take that one yet. Uh, but these are all the tests. Um, so. In the case of the reading quizzes, you'll have to get the readings from the supplemental readings folder that's under lessons. But for these textbook quizzes, I actually have the chapter in the folder for you. So you read the chapter, close it, take the quiz. Do not take the quiz with the chapter open, please. Please don't do that. I know you're at home, you can do whatever you want, you're an adult. Yeah, it's true, but you know, we also, have you guys ever thought about what the world's gonna be like when uh, all of the doctors that treat people cheated their way through medical school? There's a deeper moral question underpinning all of this that I think you should consider. Uh, so read the chapter, close it out, take the test, you get a couple attempts, it keeps the highest. All right. Uh, also, some of the wording on those are kind of tricky, so please be very attentive. Um, I have tried to address the wording a couple of times, and I've actually realized that, oh, wait, I'm actually wrong on this. Okay. Uh, so trust that it's right, but it may be tricky. OK, that's all I'm going to say. Take those. Uh, in there, and then we also have the discussions folder. And the discussions are also there ready for you to do. We have one discussion a week because this is a uh, asynchronous class. We need to be doing assignments weekly that facilitate some kind of. Class discussion, class interaction. These are the discussion boards. There are eight of them. The due dates are listed. Generally speaking, um, if you do what you're supposed to do. I give you like completion credit for it. It's only when you leave off responses or you give three word responses to your peers or whatever that I start to deduct things. So really that should be easy. Do what you're supposed to do. Don't phone it in, give meaningful feedback, actually facilitate a discussion and you'll get a hundred on those and we can just walk through. Okay. All right. So that is how the course is laid out. I'm sure that I'm forgetting something, uh, but I cannot think of what it is. So if you have any questions for me, you know how to reach me. That's brian.murphy at westcatech.edu. That's uh, Brian spelled with a Y. It's one thing you should be aware of. Uh, and other than that, I look forward to a lovely semester. And please let me know how I can help you. Have a lovely afternoon and good luck. Summer is tough, so uh, don't ever let up. You got to start going now and just keep on strong. Have a good one.